got it. That's Hello my... there, pull the video. Okay, it <laughs> all right. Hello <laughs> there, Hello. pull the video. Welcome, Hello. welcome. We are going to have a little uh, talk about your book that you published about eight months ago in October 2021. It's called Holocaust Memories. And I am so proud of what you achieved, Paul. It is an excellent memoir, really very well written. And when I look at all the reviews on Amazon, you know, you've got 98 reviews, which is, which is rather good. Um, they all applaud you for what you have written. And one person said, an amazing account of survival and courage in a world gone mad. I think that pretty well sums it up. Um, Paul, you have written um, your memoirs based basically on an album of photographs that you, that's one of the very few things or the only thing that you have kept uh, or that has survived from the war. Can you tell us a bit about that, please? Well, um, I had an uncle who had a Leica camera which I remember very well. And, and he was an avid photographer. So um, um, he was my mother's sister's husband. And he documented all the things that they did in peace and um, took photographs of members of the family. Uh, and that was then he gave out pictures to the family members uh, who asked him for them. And my mother compiled an album. And as I describe in the book, uh, just before we were to be um, um, exiled from Slovakia and deported, my uh, mother gave this book to a neighbor for safekeeping. And when the war ended, um, then uh, she went to retrieve the album and, and the neighbor happily gave it to her. Nothing else survived. The house was uh, taken over by other people in this small town where we lived. And so we left with the album. And um, that album sat on my shelf for many years. And periodically I picked it up and as I was getting older, I realized so the flow of time and that most people who were in the picture there, one way or another died. Some were killed in the Holocaust, some died naturally. And uh, that I was the only one left who remembered them and remembered what they did and how they lived, most of them. And so I, put to, I decided to write something about them. Originally, I intended this just to be for my own children and grandchildren. And, uh, but once the book was written and I asked some friends to comment on it, they said this definitely should be published. And then my good fortune was to connect with Lisbeth, who does this fantastic job of publishing memoirs of Holocaust survivors. And uh, it was just pure pleasure and joy to work with her, even though the subject itself is quite difficult. Mm. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Um, so your life uh, on the run basically started when you were how old again? Um, I would say six, really. Six years. And mm -hmm. it, it, first, I was separated from my mother in, a, in an attempt to save my life because where we lived, Slovakia, they were collect. They were beginning to annihilate the Jews in Hungary. Um, the Jews were persecuted, but uh, not uh, really being killed yet. And so I went to Hungary and lived in Hungary for a while with my grandparents. And then, um, then they began to um, 
eliminate murder the Jews in Hungary as well. And so I was smuggled back to Slovakia. And then he basically, it was um, the Jews in Slovakia were all killed who did not hide or in some way, other way escape. And I would say, we can say that's the second phase of my uh, escaping being killed. And uh, much of the book is talks about that part of uh, my survival. Yeah. And you were alone with your mother, basically, because your father uh, had died when you were, were uh, almost three years old. So you were on the run all this time with your mother, uh, who was really very smart and very uh, resourceful in um, in finding her way out of extremely dangerous situations. That is really true. And I, I realized this even as it was happening, because she, it is as if she had transformed into someone she had to be in order to survive and in order to survive also with me. And where she obtained that kind of wisdom and, um, and um, you know, savvy, because mm. she was really came from a very sheltered uh, background, as I describe in the book. And she rose to the occasion and figured things out just as they had to uh, be the, just exactly what we had to do to escape one precarious position after another. And we did, and we were among the few who stayed alive. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was amazing because you described many, many events. And, you know, I read all these stories extremely carefully and I think, my goodness, how are they going to, to, to survive this? Did you, did you ever um, think that as well? Um, that you, you thought, my goodness, this, how is my mother going to solve this problem? You know, uh, being invited by Nazi officers to, uh, to a house that was confiscated, confiscated uh, from the Jews, all that sort of things. Did you ever um, think, I'm not going to make it? Yes, yes, uh, I was keenly aware of the danger. And I remember this, I didn't write in the book. I, it, there were memories that had come to me yes. after the book yes. was finished. But yes. one of them, yeah. um, I was in this backyard and it was one of the situations where we were uh, threatened by people uh, in the neighborhood and we had to once again uh, plot our, our escape. And I looked up and there was a, a whole, um, I don't know what you call, group of airplanes. They're not a flock of configuration of bombers way up high, flying to the Russian front, uh, American bombers. Yes. And I had this fantasy of their lowering a rope with a chair at the with two chairs and I'd hop on it, call my mother and she would do the same and we'd be hoisted up into the airplane. Uh, that was uh, a marvelous sort of fantasy that I that I uh, cultivated yes. uh, from that, that point on. And just being rescued by Deus ex machina, some sort of a god in, in the machinery of the world. It, it never happened that way. No, but it was good to have this, uh, this thought with you that, yes. you that you could escape if yes. need be. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was magical thinking in some mm -hmm. way, but uh, in, some, in, in a real way, much of what was happening there to us was magic or magical, the way some people came to our help. Um, that still moves me to tears when I think of 
the goodness of some people in the midst of this horror and evil. Yeah, and putting themselves at risk to oh, yes. yeah to save you. Yeah, that that that's that's beautiful and that's very uh, yeah that's very brave. Yeah. yeah, not just risk, but the risk of death. I, the, mm. the penalty for helping a Jew. Yes. What's that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Paul, when you now look at the television and see all these people fleeing from the Ukraine, you know, mothers and children uh, carrying a little suitcase, does that bring back memories of the time? Very much so. It's, um, it's horrifying. Hmm. And um, it's horrifying what, what, these, what the people of Ukraine have to live through. And, and, and of course, unfortunately, it's not just Ukraine. Uh, um, and uh, it's also in Syria and, and, and many other places. And I have to tell you, Lisbeth, it, it, I feel that as a real personal loss because the Soviet Union was in some way um, a, a country of my hero, so to speak. They, mm. they fought and liberated us. And uh, of course, together with the allies, but, but really the Soviet Union suffered the most losses and the most deaths and, and, um, and now they're turning around and doing the same thing that, that uh, the Germans did, the Nazis did. It's, and I, 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 my favorite songs were the, were the, uh, songs of the um, the Russian uh, choir, the the Red Army chorus. I don't know whether you're familiar with some of their songs. They're marvelous, yeah, heroic and beautiful. And I can't really listen to them anymore. Mm. So uh, I have so I have a I have two CDs of the Russian Red Army chorus singing yeah. and. Uh, I'm debating what to do with them. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in due course. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That, that, that's 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 an important thing to remember and keep our hope up that the head becomes the foot and the foot becomes the head. And it's just a repeating cycle of things and that things will improve. Because okay. there are that, that there is a force towards good and there is a force towards evil it's like this manichean world we live in and uh, we just have to we just have to um hope for the good yes exactly exactly you know and that's what i like about your your memoir um while you are describing um, you know, the dreadful journey of you and your mother and what all your family members had to go through. And yet this sort of, this hope and this, this enormous will to survive and this looking into the future, you know, I think that is, uh, because I, I sometimes think, what, sh what, um, what would I have done in that situation? You know, would I have been so so brave and so intelligent and so res res uh, resourceful? I I don't think so. And then I read these stories and I think, my goodness, Lisbeth. You know, I think the lucky thing is that we don't really know, and we hope that we can be like that. Yes. And um, my mother changed. Mm. And to 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 meet the occasion. Yes. And, um, I know. I mean, in your whole in your work of of publishing these memoirs, um, you have risen to an to to an occasion in a way that I'm sure you have is part of your resources. Okay. It 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 could well be. But you know, I'm sitting here safely behind my computer in a comfortable home with the cat here next to me. So you know that's easy. Oh wow, what a really beautiful <laughs> scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, you, all you need is a cup of coffee someplace nearby. 
exactly and and that's it so that's 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 a completely different cup of tea <laughs> yeah yes yeah <laughs> yeah um is there anything else you want to add uh paul that you want to sort of um um, bring into the world what you learned maybe or what uh, what what lessons that we, we we could draw from memoirs like yours well first of all i i would just want to thank you again elizabeth you uh, you're doing extraordinarily important work um, especially as we view the world and we see that um these type of things repeat themselves mm. in some way the memoirs you are publishing uh, are giving voice to the people who have not yet had time to write out right of their of their of the horrors they're dealing with and may or may not be able to so i think this is not what you're doing is is not just picking a narrow Gone, long gone chapter of of our sorry history of of humanity. Mm. You are put. You are bringing to light a work that is, in some sense, continues to be very relevant. And uh, mm. people, uh, I think, gain con consciousness about. The consequences of such, such, um, such horrors that people perpetrate. Yeah, them. yeah. Um, so your question was, is, I would say that that is that would be my uh, my uh, main comment about the books that you're putting out, except for the fact that it ha is a joy to work with you. And um, you're a very special person. Um, I have seldom met people who who say something. This will be done by ten o'clock on May fifth, and there is, you know, thirty seconds to to that timeline, <laughs> and it's done. And it's done well. Good. And, yes. and I can tell you that I. Truly, being of, of a similar proclivity, yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciated that very much. And uh, uh, you responded to, to all the needs that I think the book had, because it thought a book like this, I think, does take on its own rhythm and its own needs. And you met all of them. Yeah. And once again, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Well, Paul, but I have to thank you because you were such a wonderful author, you know, so accommodating. And uh, so we collaborated very well together. And it was mainly because of you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is an old song, Lisbeth, which says it takes two to tango. Yeah. Two to tango. <laughs> and I think that... Um, <laughs> We danced together very well. Wonderful. Thank you very much for this, uh, this talk, uh, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look. Where is he?